Welcome everybody to part two of the weekly OTR Central Q&A video. Remember, you can ask your questions on Twitter at OTR Central. It's the Twitter handle. I ask for the questions every week. So follow that damn Twitter page and give me those questions when you get asked for them, okay? All right, let's start with part two. Zach Powers kicks us off by asking me, any tips or tricks to help me on the air as a sports broadcaster? You came to me for tips. I'm flattered and also kind of befuddled. It's not like I'm on TV or on the radio. I'm just a lonely guy here on YouTube. Um, depends on what type of broadcasting I guess you're doing. Um, if you're like a play-by-play -play guy, um, figure out a way to do things in your style. Make sure your personality shows. And if you don't have a personality, make sure you develop some type of persona and some type of personality. You have to have that. And you have to figure out what way you can be unique or what way you can stand out and be different. And also make sure you're always prepared. Um, as far as like if you're an opinion type of guy, uh, figure out how to be unique. Like the one thing I will say about myself, I don't care if anybody agrees with me in the comment section or not. One thing I will say about myself is in terms of like, I feel like the entire history of everybody coming on to YouTube and talking about wrestling, there's been nobody quite like me. There has been nobody quite like me. Not always for the good, not always for the better. People don't always like it. But I am unique. Be unique. Figure out your path to being unique and then do it. Learn from others that are successful. See what they do and how you can kind of put your own Vince McMahon type of spin on it and make it your own bitch. Uh, don't be afraid to rattle cages, especially if you're in the opinion business. The more cages you rattle, the more people you anger, the more money you could potentially make. Don't be a softie. Don't be one of these pussies that sits there and tries to be kind and nice to everybody. As the reality is, that's not how the world works. It's about sensationalism. It's about all of that stuff. So try to do it with some integrity, but make sure you have your own personality. Try to figure out your own way to be unique. Uh, bust your ass. That's all I can say. Joe Del Vecchio. With all the gimmicks Braun Strowman has done, uh, is he running the risk of becoming a joke character? I wouldn't say a joke character. I would say a guy that fans might potentially not take as seriously or as seriously as they should. It's like what happened with the big show over the years and Kane uh, to a certain degree as well. These were big dudes that you could take seriously, but eventually over a period of time, so many heel face changes, especially with the big show, so many stupid gimmicks they did with both of those guys, and the constant overexposure of them, and then the eventual constant jobbing out of them and bad storylines with little to no payoff, eventually people didn't take them seriously anymore. So that could potentially be a concern with Braun Strowman. Sam Katz asks, can we get more Marcus Snark? I have no clue who the hell Marcus Snark is. Now, Marcus Smart, on the other hand, asking ye may receive. But Marcus Snark, I have no clue who that is. <laughs> Guitar Smasher 91. Is there a chance WWE will give Bobby Lashley the universal title? Yes. There's a very big chance of that. They were big on him a decade ago. He's grown quite a bit of a, as a performer. He's got legit MMA chops uh, now, so... I feel like the company would be confident with him having a world strap for them at some point. I do. Uh, WNC podcast is Triple H signing all these indie guys to do his failure due to his failure to make sons, or is it a ploy to get internet fans to love him? He wishes he could have son. Maybe he looks at Finn Balor and says, "You know, that could have been my son, daughter, son, whatever." Uh, but he's not. No. Um. From an NXT standpoint, uh, that's the type of crowd you're appealing to, or the hardcore internet type of fans, I guess you would say. So it makes sense to sign guys that appeal to that demographic. Um, also, part of the reality is, that's a lot of what's out there in the wrestling world right now, are those types of guys. Those guys that emphasize spots and flips and kicks and athleticism, with a de-emphasis on size and promo work and characters and storylines. Um, so... In a way, it's kind of Triple H uh, catching up to the reality of the talent that is provided. 
Like, if you're looking for a bunch of six foot five, 300 pounds with incredible talents that are five-star type of guys and they're not there, they're just not there. You just can't artificially make them. So you have to go with what's there. And what he, what is there is what he's signing. So, I mean, there's a deep down part of me believes that he likes the thought of having all these younger guys around because he wants them to be his son that he could never have, but in that case, he just adopt another dog. Uh, the Ryan Steele. Should WWE have a happy Lana Day shirt for Lana with uh, the success Rusev Day has had? No. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, Michael Corvin. Who you who do you guess will be a part of the Hall of Fame next year outside of Bam Bam Bigelow? Hall of Fame next year outside of Bam Bam Bigelow. Um... Lawrence Taylor would seem to make sense as a celebrity guy, wouldn't it? Especially if Bam Bam was going in. Um, unless you had LT and Duck Bam Bam, which would be kind of weird. He'd probably want somebody else, but it would make some sense. Uh, who else would go in? New York, 35. Um, hmm. New York, 35. Oh, God. Um... If Taker doesn't wrestle anymore, it would be him, and he would be the headliner. Um, I would hope they would get Vader in, especially since Vader's still kicking. Uh, British Bulldog maybe would be due. Let's hope maybe China. We can randomly mention her name on TV, then that means we could probably put her in the Hall of Fame. Mountie's Corner. Oh, God, here we go. When Jeff Jarrett becomes a GM, will you buy his new shirt? No. And especially this coming from a guy who tried to both take pictures for the fine men that watch WWE and fine women that watch WWE hashtags, and I cannot determine which one was uglier. No, Mountie. If the Memphis mid-card piece of crap found you became the GM, I would not buy one of his goddamn shirts, okay? You buy my shirt. I don't buy his. Brian Walmer. How long will Carmella hold the SmackDown Women's Championship? Backlash? I don't know. Really interesting question. I don't think that's going to be a long one. And did you watch uh, Rock and Wrestling? Yes. Yes, I did. Just like I'm sure you did, too. Now here comes the one dude who claims that I couldn't have watched it in the 80s because I wasn't old enough, even though I was born in 1981, and that stuff happened in the mid to late 80s. And we seems entirely impossible that somebody could remember things from when they're 5, 6, 7, 8 years old. Beyond me. Whatever. Johnny Wrestling. Have you ever smoked crack before doing a video and your thoughts on crackheads? Rob Ford was a saint! Um, <laughs> I would never do that. I got that at home. I can't believe he's dead now. Uh, no, I don't smoke crack. Thank you very much. I do no drugs, believe it or not. I don't even drink. I'm not a drinker. My one dub vice is smoking. And it's probably just as bad as any of them. So, uh, But no, I don't know why you're asking about the crack stuff. But if you want to smoke crack while you're watching wrestling, you do your thing, dog. Enjoy them rocks. Uh, Thomas EM 1991. One professional sports team you've despised with a passion. Uh, Green Bay Packers. That's the team I despise the most. Before that would have been somebody like the Detroit Pistons in the late 80s, early 90s, because they were the number one roadblock um, to Jordan and the Bulls winning a championship. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Copper Wolf. Is Reigns versus Orton the solution for uh, Roman getting booed because people can't react if they're falling asleep? <laughs> to be fair, haven't they done Reigns versus Orton before and that didn't do the trick? <laughs> the premise of the question is funny, though. <laughs> Brolick asks, Is the Rusev controversy an angle so we can enter and win the greatest Royal Rumble? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'll probably do a, a solo video on that. I, don't know, I can't figure out what the hell that's all about. 
Horror, horror Movie Review 73. How long will Nakamura's heel, turn, heel run last before he's a jobber? Um, it doesn't go well six to nine months. Carmine Riches. Given the success of SummerSlam 1992, why doesn't WWE do more shows here in the UK like SummerSlam or WrestleMania? Yeah, especially since they're doing the freaking greatest Royal Rumble ever on a flippin' Saturday and it's airing here on the East Coast of like, what is it, uh, 12, or, you know, like high noon or 12.30 p.m.? Um, I don't know why they couldn't at least do a SummerSlam again in the UK. Um... Everybody talks about it being a great show, even even a lot of people understand that it was largely a one-match show, but it still went off really, really well. You got a nice-sized, loyal, hardcore fan base there. Yeah, they should do more big, important shows there. I agree. I don't know why they don't. You would think that they would be all over that. Uh, Z Slayer, do you see Velveteen Dream being used on the main roster? I think there's a shot he could work because Vince thinks that that's how a black man is. Like either they rap or they dance or they're all types of suspect. Now if Velveteen rapped and danced, then Vince might put the world strap on him. By that I mean WWE title. Because by God, that's a black man I can believe in. Um... I think there's a chance he could get used on the main roster, though. Yes, I do. Edward one coli. So E. coli, I gotcha. Do you think wrestlers take Dave Meltzer's opinions way too seriously? Uh, I think fans take Meltzer's opinions way too seriously because they can't differentiate between the news and rumors and gossip that he gets that's legitimate from the opinions of his that are largely crap, especially when skewed by the New Japan bias being the shill that he is. And you can clearly see who he's a shill for. Let's be real. But I think wrestlers take his news, gossip, rumors, reports way too seriously and not so much the opinions. It's really weird how that dynamic works. Um, but I don't think they take his opinions on like wrestling itself way too seriously. They take it on like the news, the gossip, the rumors, and such and such. Uh, Philly PP 85 Would you ever consider starting a crowdfunding page with the goal being the price of a mania travel package where you could charge people money to watch your YouTube videos. Fuck that. Hell no. I offer shirts that people can buy. Hopefully I have more shirts soon. But at least then I could justify that by saying that is merch that I'm selling. That's capitalism. That's not e-begging. Like all these cats on here with the Patron accounts or Patreon accounts, whatever the hell you call them. I mean, to me, that's just fucking glorified begging for money. That's what it is. You're not even really offering a product or service other than saying, oh, you get first access to this or you get first access to that. You know what? I'll say this. If it works for them and they're able to make money off of that and their viewers, their fans, their supporters choose to support them in that way, terrific. Good for them. I just remember again, Going back almost six years now, that stupid newsletter bullshit where shitty product, but still a product, and all the crap that came that way that was stupid and unjustified, and all the while now, a lot of those same people that used to shit on me for that, they're fucking supporting the flat out e beggars now. Like, what the hell happened? So, nah. I'm not at a point where I, f I could feel comfortable doing that, nor do I really want to get into that space. I just don't want to. I just don't have an appeal for it. So no, I would not do that. If I go to WrestleMania, it's because I made it possible for myself to go to WrestleMania. I'm not a charity case. Instead of somebody giving me, donating out of the blue, 10, 20, 50 bucks, 
for something like that. I would prefer they gave it to some Make-A-Wish kid or some other kid or somebody else that has like a terminal illness or something that's always wanted to go. It's been on their bucket list, but they can't go. Or it's the one thing they really wanted to do. Go find those people and go give that money to them to help make their dreams happen. Help make that a possibility. I'm a capable, able adult male. If I want it to happen bad enough, I can make it happen. Or if it doesn't happen, there might be other reasons for it. And I have to be okay with that because that's ultimately some of the suck that goes along with adulting. Um, but no, I would not ask the people to do that. No way. New Mosaic. Who would win in a real fight? Brock Lesnar or Andre the Giant? Brock. I understand Andre was a giant and he was massive. But Lesnar would be able to move too quickly. Lesnar's a strong fucking as an ox dude. He would probably beat up on Andre pretty good because Andre wouldn't be able to move. The more interesting fight, the fight. One of these fights in terms of wrestling all time that you would just tell me it's this person in their prime versus this person in their prime. And I legitimately need zero story. I don't need these guys to talk shit about each other. I don't need him to say anything about anything. Just put these two in a ring in a cage at the same time and let's see what happens. It would be Brock Lesnar and Haku. You could make that fight happen with both guys at the height of their power, in their physical peaks, in their primes. That's a match I would pay a lot of money to see. That's a fight I would say pay a lot of money to see. That would be the one. Lesnar versus Haku. And Leonard Batman, or Leonardo Batman, easy for me to read, uh, <laughs> asked me, would you do a podcast appearance with Rustling Soup? Absolutely. Why the hell wouldn't I? I'd be technically willing, if scheduling works out in different things, to do a podcast appearance with pretty much anybody, whether people agree with me or not. Why not? I think it's fun. Sometimes it's more fun when you don't agree and you have a discussion and a debate. But it could be fun when you can go agree with them, too. Uh, but yeah, hell yeah, I'd do it. Absolutely. But anyways, that's it for this Q&A video. Make sure, again, if you didn't watch part one and your question wasn't answered here, go watch it. And even if your question wasn't answered in this one, you didn't go watch that one, watch the first one, too. Watch them both. See you later.